Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering Cisco cybersecurity operations, and this is exam 210-255. Now we're moving on to section 1.4 that says define these terms as they pertain to the Microsoft Windows file system. So we need to understand and be able to explain what is FAT32, what is NTFS, what is alternative data streams, MACI or MACE, EFI, free space and timestamps on a file system. Now file system, if you ever formatted the hard drive, you know that you need to choose a file system. But what is file system? Now file system is an operating system overall structure in which the files are named, stored and organized on a storage device. So if you look here on the right, this is our file system that is organized the structure of our files and folders. So for a hard disk to be able to hold files and programs, it has to be partitioned and formatted. Partitioning is the process of creating a logical division on a hard drive. A hard drive can have one or more partitions. So when you have a brand new hard drive, you can format it as one partition, just C for example, or you can have many partitions. Now it is not recommended to have only a single partition for a large hard drives. Formatting is a process of creating and configuring a file allocation table and creating the root directory. Several file system types are supported by the various versions of Windows, such as, it doesn't say here FAT, FAT12, FAT16, FAT32, EXFAT and NTFS. Now every time we went further with it from FAT16, for example, to FAT32, well, we have some improvement and the latest one is new technology file system or NTFS for short. Now, what is a FAT for example? What actually it is a file system? So for example, a FAT or file allocation table is just a, it's just a, like a database, right? It says, okay, well, file one is stored here. File two is stored here and so on. The dire uh, uh, a directory, a subdirectory is stored here. So it explains where the files are stored. So now, for example, say that we do want to delete this file. We don't actually go and delete the file as it is. We, we delete the file from the file allocation table or from FAT. Um, let me put it here to, for example, we delete it here, this one and the pointer. So that doesn't say, but the file still, it still is there. So the file is, is still located on the hard disk. So for example, as a, as a forensic uh, analyst, even though if the hard disk is empty, there might be data there that is being stored. So uh, the, it's been deleted, but it's still there. So for example, say that we write a new file. So we write the file number four. File number four could be overwriting this, and then we have that point in there. So file number one, now it's totally deleted. There's a way to clear it if you want to delete the clear and everything. Okay, so. And we move on. So newer versions of Windows, they support both version FAT32 and NTFS. The file table for the NTFS is called a master file table. Now FAT32, like we said, stands for file allocation table, which keeps track of all your files and helps the computer locate them on the disk. So even if our files gets fragmented, split into various areas on the disk, the file allocation table still can keep track of it. So for example, um, let's just, uh, I'll explain this as well, yeah? So for example, let's just say that you have a hard disk here. That's your hard disk. Now the hard disk, when you partition and format it, it's gonna create a clusters like this, right? So just imagine, and I'll try and write it as good as I can. Okay, so this, now they're all empty. So when you write the file, when you create a file, that file is going to be starting right in the first cluster. Then it might go to the second cluster and then it might go to the third cluster. So that file goes through three clusters. So for example, let's say that we have a new file that come up with them writing it down, right? So that's going to go to this cluster, this cluster, this cluster, and this one, for example. Now, when we go and delete a file, no, let's just write another file. Yeah. So we go and write here very quickly here another file another file so say for example we go and delete the first file that we did write down we wrote delete this this and this 
Now we, we're going to create a new file. So we write it down. That's going to override the old one. Yeah. So it's going to go through here. First cluster, second, third, and then go here. That's called fragmented now, because when we read the file, we are reading it from a different places. Yeah. So that's called fragmented. Let's move this. Okay. This helps the computer locate files easier and allows the smaller clusters, which improves the efficiency of your hard drive. The number of after each FAT version, such as FAT12, FAT16, or FAT32, does represent the number of bits that are assigned to address clusters in the FAT table. So FAT32, sorry, FAT12 supports 4096 clusters, or 2 to the power of 12. FAT16 is the maximum of 2 to the power of 16, which is 65,536 clusters. And FAT32 is a maximum of 2 to the power of 32, which is over 4 billion. But 4, cluster, four bits are reserved, so it's just 2 to the power of 28, which is 20, 268 million. EXFAT, another version, this, this uses the whole 32-bit for addressing. We cannot talk about EXFAT in coming slides. So NTFS stands for Net New Technology File System. NTFS has a number of advantages over the previous file system named FAT32. One major, one major advantage of NTFS is that it includes features to improve reliability. For example, the new technology file system includes fault tolerance, which automatically repairs the hard drive errors without displaying the error message. It also keeps detailed transaction log, which tracks hard drive's errors. This can help prevent hard disk failures and makes it possible to recover files if the hard drive does fail. So NTFS allows permissions such as read, write, and execute to be set for individual directories and files. It even supports spanning volumes, which allows directories of files to spread across multiple hard drives. So for example, you can create with NTFS, you can create a C drive that spans many hard drives. For example, five, six hard drives, they all C drive, and you can put the file one file in all of these six drives. So FAT32 and NTFS, all operating system supports FAT32 because it is a simple file system and it has been around for a long time. NTFS is more robust and effective than FAT since it makes use of advanced data structure to improve reliability, disk space utilization and overall performance. So these are the difference between FAT32 and NTFS, for example. The partition size is the same, 2 terabytes with 2 terabytes. The file name, the file name in FAT32 is 8.3, which is 8 for the name and then for the extension. 255 characters in NTFS. The file size is the difference, yeah? 4 gigabyte only for FAT32, maximum file size is 4 gigabyte, while in NTFS you can have 16 terabytes. File encryption or folder encryption, it does not support it on FAT32, but it is supported in NTFS. Tolerance, not supported, or fault tolerance, well, yes, we have auto repair in NTFS. Security, we have only on the network for FAT32, but we have local and network for NTFS. Compression is not supported in FAT32, but it is supported in, in NTFS. And conversion is possible in FAT32, but not allowed in NTFS. Compatibility, you can see the windows here, missing, we're missing Windows 8 and 10 for NTFS. So extended file allocation table, it is, was introduced in 2006 and it was optimized for flash drives. This is designed to be a lightweight file system like FAT32, but without the extra features and overheads of NTFS and without the limitations of FAT32. Like NTFS, and XFAT, EXFAT has very large limits on file and partition size, allowing you to store files much larger than 4 GB allowed for FAT32. Well, obviously, first you have to have a flash drive that is larger than 4 GB, which are very common these days. EXFAT is more compatible than NTFS. For example, Mac OS X includes only read-only support for NTFS, but offers a full read and write support for EXFAT. Now, NTFS has a file called MFT, or Master File Table, which is a database in which information about every file in directory NT file system volume is stored. It even has an entry for itself. 
This entry is 1024 bytes in size and is detailed information about the file or directory such as the type, the size, date and time of creation, date and time of most recent modification and also identity is either stored in MFT entries or in a space external to MFT but is described by MFT entry. Like as I was drawing earlier the FAT file allocation table, the MFT is the same thing here for NTFS. The following are a few facts about the clusters. Now, allocated clusters hold data that is related to the file that exists and has an entry in the file system MFT area. Unallocated cluster, a cluster that has not been connected to an existing file and may be empty or not empty, those containing data that is related to deleted file and still has then been overwritten with a new file data. So for example, like I was explaining earlier, um, now when we have a data, now NTFS uh, master file table is going to point to that cluster where the data is. But if we delete that data, the data is actually not going to be deleted from the hard disk, it's just going to be de deleted from master file table. Timestamps or MACI, modify access creates an entry modifies. So NTFS tracks a lot of timestamps. Each file has a timestamp for modify, access, create and entry modified, commonly referred to as MACI values. Files and directory timestamps are one of the resources forensic analysts use to determine when something has happened or in what particular order a sequence of events took place. As these timestamps usually are stored in some internal format, additional software is needed in interpreting them and translating them into a format that analysts can easily understand. So what is alternate data stream? Now alternate data stream have been around since introduction of NTFS. They were designed to have a compatibility with old hierarchical file system from Mac, which uses something called forks or resource forks. File system without forks, they allow only a single set of data for the content. While file system with forks allow multiple such a content. So for example, let's just say the file system that has only one fork it allows you to load data only that what you click in with more than one fork for example you can once you click on something on a link or a file that could load another file behind the scenes so for that reason i with ads you can use an, uh, to hide the presence of secret or malicious file inside the file record of an in innocent file for example if you uh, windows says uh, file test.txt, the metadata that tells you where to get test.txt may also contain information about swyware.exe. Those malicious files may be on your system and you cannot see them using normal means. For example, if you issue the command dir, that will list the directory, the high, uh, a space backslash r, that's going to show you, for example, other files as well in alternate data streams. As you can see here, we have a file text dot, uh, test dot txt, but also has this hidden stream of test dot txt. For example, when you click that, when you click that, let me just go back. When you click this test dot txt, that's going to load this file as well. So behind the scenes, that loads another file. Window boot process now. So two types of computer firmware does exist. So first we used to have basic input output system or BIOS that we know. And then we came with newer format, uh, new firmware called Unified Extended Firmware Interface, UEFI. Now BIOS firmware was created, was created in early 1980s and works the same way it did when it was created. But as computer has evo they evolved, it became difficult for BIOS firmware to support all the new features requested by, by users. So UEFI, UEFI was designed to replace the and support the new features. In BIOS firmware, the process begins with the BIOS initial initialization phase. This is when the hardware devices are initialized and power and self test is performed to make sure that all devices are communicating. When the system disk is discovered, the post ends and the last instruction in the post is to look for the master boot record MBR. So we're talking about BIOS. So we have a BIOS initialization, initialization first and then the BIOS will load post, power on self-test to make sure that all devices are communicating and they're on there working. And then once they finish the post, the last setup is to load the master boot record. 
For UEFI, in contrast to BIOS firmware, UEFI firmware has a lot of visibility into the boot process. UEFI boots by loading EFI program files and they all are stored as .efi EFI files in a special disk partition known as the EFI system partition or ESP for short. Whether, the, whether you have a firmware of BIOS or UEFI after a valid Windows installation is located, the boot mgr.exe file is run. The boot mgr will do, does switch the system from a real mode to protected mode so that all system memory can be used. Boot mgr.exe reads the boot configuration database. Now boot configuration database contains addition, any additional code needed to start the computer along with indication whether the computer is coming from hibernation or is it from the cold start. If the computer is coming from out of the hibernation, the boot process continues with re win resume.exe. This allows the computer to read the hiberfill sys, which contains the state the computer when it was put into hibernation. If the computer is being booted from the cold start, then the winload.exe is loaded. Winload.exe file creates a record of the hardware configuration in the registry. Now the registry is a record of all of the settings, options, hardware and software that computer has. Windows Winload.exe also uses kernel mode called sign-in to make sure that all drivers are digitally signed. After the drivers have been examined, Winload.exe runs an NTOS kernel .exe, which starts the windows in kernel and sets up a hardware abstraction layer. All. Finally, the session manager subsystem reads the registry to create the user environment, start the winlogon service and prepare each user's desktop as the login. So EFI system partition, e ESP, the EFI system partition is a partition on hard disk drive or solid state drive whose main purpose is to interact with unified extensible firmware interface. UEFI firmware loads files stored on the EFI system partition to start the operating system and different utilities. Now the ESP contains the four main components. First one is bootloader, program for the operating system that is currently installed in the computer, device drivers files for the all hardware devices currently present and utilized by the computer during its boot time, system utility program that starts running prior to booting an operating system and data files like error logs. Thank you very much for watching this section 1.4. Define these items as they pertain to the Microsoft Windows file system. And please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici and bye bye.